and breathe. Welcome to Calm Club, the podcast from Anxiety UK, where we look at various aspects of anxiety, managing anxiety, researching into anxiety, treatments for anxiety. And we talk to a variety of guests about anxiety-related issues, tips and tools, strategies to help you manage them, um, various different aspects of anxiety. And I'm delighted today, today we're going to be talking about gardening. And I'm delighted we've been joined by a member of our participation group, um, uh, a kind lady called Freya, who, who's given us her time today. Freya's also, uh, as well as being a member of our participation group, is a privately practicing uh, multidisciplinary um, psychologist and, and draws on cognitive behavioral therapy as a treatment uh, a type of treatment, as many of you will be familiar with. Some of you will have had cognitive cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT as we commonly know it. So Freya has got that knowledge and that experience as a, as a, as a private practice in uh, uh, multidisciplinary psychologist to, to know what CBT can do for us. But today Freya is going to talk to us about her knowledge of, of gardening and why, why gardening is good for our mental well-being, our mental health and, and our anxiety. And, and we'll look at some of the things that we should be doing at this time of year, because obviously we're, we're heading rapidly into autumn and, 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 and soon be rapidly into, into winter before too long. So we're going to talk a little bit about what, uh, what we should be doing in our gardens to prepare ourselves for winter, to, to, to sow the seeds ready for next year. And, and I'm hoping in a few months' time, Freya will be able to come back and join us again in the spring and we can, we can take this conversation on again. So Freya, welcome to And Breathe. Thank you for having me. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Fantastic. So just tell us briefly a little bit more about yourself and how, how, how do you combine these two worlds of being a, a privately practising uh, uh, therapist and, 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 and gardening? How, how do those two worlds align with you? Well, I think I think the one in the same in many ways. Um, for for I've got an allotment myself, and um, I I absolutely fully advocate everybody to do some sort of gardening, even if you're. I, I'm in a flat, so um, that's where the allotment comes in. I contacted my local authority, so I've got a little bit of a piece of land that I rent. Um, I also have window boxes, you know, plants in the home, all sorts of things like that, just to keep my, my hands busy, especially when my mind is so busy as well. And um, so what I like to, to what I like to tell my clients about gardening is it's a great way to ground. So I'm sure a lot of our listeners are really um, um, that they, they know very much what grounding is. Um, And as a result, um, I I took a little bit of a look at the scientific side of it and just quite briefly, um, uh, we found these microbes in soil particularly and they tend to boost serotonin, which um, is thought to be the sort of happy chemical in our brains. So the more that we can do to boost that, the the better we can um, use our skills to manage our anxiety patterns. Um, and and the, one of the best things about gardening, I think, particularly with uh, particularly with anxiety, is that um, once you're in touch with nature like that, you start to appreciate the sort of calmness and everything that is absolutely opposite to anxiety. I found myself personally, as well as professionally, that when I am doing tasks in the garden, whether it's digging, planting or harvesting, I'm very calm and I find that there's just a, just a peace to it. And with that peace, I find that the anxiety just sort of goes to the back of your mind, if not disappears completely. Um, so I, I always ask my clients to, you know, try it out. It's not for everyone. But it is really good. And particularly if you are somewhere without a garden, if you've got house plants, um, I love to use aloes and succulents and um, peace lilies as well, because what they do is they purify the air. And if we're purifying our bodies, then we can make strides towards purifying the mind as well. Um, As I'm sure a lot of you are aware that um, it's... for for mental health 
we need to look at it more holistically. So it's not just about the mind, it's about the body and also spirituality. It doesn't necessarily mean anything out there, um, but everything all interacts. Okay, thanks for that. And uh, thanks for that introduction and, and understanding. I'm glad you mentioned particularly about living in a flat and lots of it. It's something that I was going to come on to is that, you know, not everybody has access to a, access to a garden. I think you've already clearly cover that question for me by by talking about the fact that you know you can use window boxes you can you know if you can get access to an allotment the local authorities allotments that's great what what if you don't have access to to an allotment are there other schemes maybe that local authorities or other community groups that maybe could help out Oh, definitely. Um, you'll find a lot of people, um, particularly if they're um, a bit older, sometimes they'll ask people to work on their allotment and help with some of the, the more manual labour because it's, it's gardening's great, but sometimes there is a lot of um, labour involved. So, yeah, you can, there's um, social media groups and you can, there's also a few websites knocking about as well where you can sign up and offer your services and and you t- i think the way that people play that is somebody will say i need help with such and such a job and you can go forward and say yeah i'd be great at that but i've only got so many hours a week or maybe it's just a one-off but that's that's something that you work out between you yeah so just keeping your eyes and ears open to, to local community groups on on social media to see if someone's looking for help or support, maybe someone who's, as you say, a bit more elderly and struggling to keep their allotment up to scratch, or you can help them with a bit of free labour or uh, something like that. Great. So, yeah, we we, we sort of we, we know that well, we've established we know from 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 lockdown we were encouraged to go out and engage with nature a lot, and that's gardening and gardening type activities is very much nature related, isn't it? And we know from you know, lockdown and COVID, that, that, that getting out into the fresh air was good for our mental well-being. So I guess, you know, it's a natural extension of that, isn't it? Gardening is is good for our for our for our well-being, our mental health, because we're getting out, engaging with nature, we're getting fresh air, we're doing a very mindful activity as well, aren't we? Whether what kind of jobs that you you normally would do in your allotment, Freya? It is very mindful, definitely. Um, it's it's I I. With the allotment, it's quite all on. So um, I, I I use an ecological um, strategy called no dig. So for some of us, we're not particularly fond of the digging bit. So what you can do, you can use mulch, um, which is grass clippings, all sorts of stuff. Um, and even one of the things that I do is I get in touch with a local um, forestry company and they bring me wood chip at this time of year when everybody's shutting yeah. down their gardens and um, put that on the allotment and it'll rot down over winter and it's really good for the environment and um, particularly what's good at this time of year is planting bulbs and it's it's one of those delayed gratification things so you're planting all the bulbs you can now and then when spring comes and um, usually from about mid-February if you've got crocuses in and you'll start to see them coming up. And I, I can't describe the feeling you get when there's birds and bees and all sorts of other insects and things. Just They might just land on one of the flowers you've you've planted. And, and like I say, I can't describe it, but it is so satisfying. And, and, and you talked a lot there about flowers and, and, and bulbs and stuff. And what else do you, do you grow veg? Is, is, is there a benefit in that as well, maybe? Absolutely. Um, I grow all sorts. So uh, it's salads, uh, root veg. At the moment, particularly this time of year, I'm harvesting carrots that I planted maybe in March. Yeah. Um, parsnips are brilliant at this time of year because they need the first frost to become really sweet. Okay. Um, so I'll be I'll be harvesting them in the next couple of weeks as we've only just got a frost. Um, and yeah, all the um, I, I grow a lot of fruit, um, and as we all know in the supermarkets, fruits can be quite expensive. So, even if even if you are paying for a rent for an allotment or paying somebody for the privilege of using their garden, which isn't usual, but just in case you were, it it's the 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 benefits that you get are absolutely it, it totally outweighs the negatives you know of maybe a cost or what have you yeah. um, and of course this you know, the, the current climate the cost of living pressures that we're all facing i mean for, for, for many people some of their anxiety some of their mental health 
worries are, are based around the whole financial pressures that we're all facing. And I know that, as you say, that initial, there may be an initial outlay to access the allotment or whatever, but if you've got your own garden, then obviously that's probably negligible. But actually, this can pay for itself, can't it? It can repay you in in the savings in, in, in growing your own veg and growing your own produce. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, 100%. And, and you find that the taste of your own veg, I don't know whether it's just psychological or whether it's in actual fact, but the, the, when you've got your own veg and you taste it, it's just so much better. And and a lot of studies suggest that the veg that you grow has got a lot less in pesticides and that sort of thing, so it's healthier. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, obviously growing it in your own garden or on an allotment, it's not going to be subjected to, you know, like the mass-produced uh, agricultural processes that I would say have the lots of pesticides and other you know, chemical elements to the to, to the processing of those things, I suppose. So um, that, that there could be a benefit there, couldn't there, in in, in having it locally produced and fresh. You, you touched a couple of times on this time of year. Of course, we're we're recording this in the autumn, heading quickly into winter. I know. I said to you before we started recording, I would looking out the window this morning it was really foggy and misty and it's cleared off now that the sun's burnt that off and i'm looking out now the window and the beautiful blue sky actually and the sun's shining off the the the, the, the autumn flower the autumn leaves and there's a tree just out at the front of my window that's all the leaves have turned to gold already it's an absolutely beautiful sight but what what kind of things should you be doing at this time of year i mean is there any specific jobs or tasks in the garden that you mentioned planting bulbs is, is one and anything else that people should be considering at this this particular time of year so for, for me um if you're growing veg a lot of it's shut down so you're taking out all the summer plants you you're building um compost heaps and you know keeping everything quite um ecological um i also a bit further along, maybe next month, I'll cut down raspberry canes if, if for autumn fruiting raspberries. Um, if you've got summer fruiting raspberries, you leave the canes where they are for now um, because that's that's where the fruit goes next year, but autumn is a bit different. Um, you've also got the last little bits of harvest. Um, my last courgette came off the plant only last week, so this 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 weather's done really really well for squashes this year. Um, I know it's been a bit wet and a bit miserable, but the squashes have loved it. <laughs> and um, uh, also, if you've got a if you've got access to a greenhouse, you should be getting your last few chilies. Um, it's uh, that you can grow them in uh, indoors as well, especially if you have the heating on for a lot of the time. So you know, if you've if you've already got that factored into your budget, pop a chili plant on the windowsill, and they should thrive there as well. Um, and yeah, have a have, uh, you can also um, plant some flowers that will sort of hibernate over winter. And then they'll come out at about March. And there's your pot marigolds. Um, you've got sweet williams, that sort of thing. So if you've uh, got a couple of plant pots outside your door, they're excellent for that because they can stand the, the frosts. Right, right. So apart from growing things, and obviously because of the frost and that, there's obviously some things that you won't want to be planting or growing at this time of year. Are there any other tasks that you could be doing around the garden to just to prepare yourself for spring and, and i know we've talked about maybe uh, uh, you you're coming back onto the podcast in, in in a few months time six seven months time and when we get to spring we'll hopefully have freya back to talk about what you can be doing and planning for the spring and the summer but anything else that you can be doing around the garden at this particular time of year just as maintenance type work and that kind of thing is there some things that they, people ought to consider in that in that respect Oh, absolutely. Um, from a from an animal point of view, if you're clearing away twigs and leaves and that sort of thing, if you um, pile them in a corner, which you're not going to be looking at every day, you know, sort of out of the way so it doesn't look too messy for you, if, if, if that's the sort of thing you're bothered about. Um, you'll find that um, creatures like um, hedgehogs will hibernate in there. So you're not do, not just doing them a favour, you're doing yourself a favour because by the time spring comes around, you can use that stuff for your garden beds as well. Um, if you've got um, any plant pots at this time of year, I um, just put some leaves or some wood chip or something on top of the plant pots. 
they'll keep your bulbs away from all the frost. Um, they'll keep all your plants healthy as well, um, because what they'll do is they'll hold on to water. So during the, the winter, if we haven't had a lot of rain or or there's um, it's been a bit too cold, so it's just bitter, the wood chip will hold the moisture in and the roots of the plants won't um, crumble away, so to speak. Brilliant. That's a useful tip. Thank you. Really useful <laughs> yeah. Tip. yeah. Okay. Uh, you got any more gems like that? Um, yeah. <laughs> if you've got some strawberry plants, um, what I tend to do is the, the it, sa- it sounds a bit obvious, but if you put straw around the strawberry plants, that, that'll mulch down as well. So you won't even see it by the spring, but it'll keep the plants really healthy as well. Um, and if you've got any plants which are a bit um, less hardy, so some sort uh, some fuchsias maybe, or um, um, sort of pansies even, if you've got any um, old um, cloth or, or mesh or something like that, you can pop them over your plants, especially if there's a really hard frost, and that will keep them from dying off as well. I'm terrible with fuchsias and lavender. They never seem to survive with me, but I tried that yeah. last year, put the mesh on top, and they've had much better. <laughs> it does sound like some of those more, I want to say exotic plants, more, you know, um, more com- complex plants would be a bit more challenging, but it sounds like it's actually it's about being brave and just doing whatever you want to do and not worrying too much about it. There's not. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And you've got to, um, you've got to keep in mind where you live as well. So I, I'm in the Midlands, so I can't get away with quite as much as somebody in say Cornwall can. It's much milder down there and anybody um, around Liverpool way where the North Atlantic drift is, they get, like a gust of warmer wind so a lot oh, of the plants there are, are much um they tend to be more hardy because they've got more warmth coming at them and um, so yeah for me it's always a trial and error and there's pleasure in that as well you know as you learn and you grow and um, not only with your garden but inside in yourself personally as well right fantastic um well i i've really enjoyed listening to this Fred. i mean i think um we could no doubt it's one of these topics we could we could go around in, in circles and talk about all day. Is there any any particular thoughts that you've had about tips and other advice that we haven't covered already that you think, oh hang on, I wish we'd mentioned this that, that we should we should be sharing? Yeah, I mean, um, if you if you if you, if you do get hold of an allotment at this time of year, I forgot to mention green manure. So okay. what you can be doing is planting certain kind of like clover, that sort of thing, that grows over winter, and then once you come to March, and you, what you can do is you can dig it in, and that will make the soil a lot more nutritious for when you plant, say, corn or um, brassicas and things like that. Right. And, um, but the, you can always, at this time of year, plant winter lettuce. That will grow at home, outside, if it's not um, in the way of weather, say if it's on a wall or something. Um, you've got all the cresses and maybe um, beetroot if it's further down south. So, the, like I say, if, if it's if, if a it's, um, if it's case of just seeing what you can, Give it a Google. There's so much information out there as well. But I'd always say if something um, I was once told, you can't grow aubergines, but I gave it a go anyway and I succeeded. So right. never let anybody tell you that you, you can't. can't. You can't. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'd also like to make a point of saying that the community as well in gardening is just so lovely. Everybody wants to help everybody. You all come together from different points of the, either the world or from different sectors. Yes. And it's so good to learn. And that, that's something that we, we talk about a lot, isn't it? When we're talking about mental health, mental well-being is about being connected with other people sometimes is is, is, a, is a key element of, of looking after your mental well-being. And, and I think being part of a wider community group of gardeners actually brings in naturally that, that wider connection with other people, doesn't it? That's a fantastic thought as well. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, clearly gardening, whether you're growing flowers, whether you've got an allotment, whether you've got a window box, whether you've got a massive garden, 
whatever it is, grow veg. There's there's things you can be doing all year round, isn't there? Clearly, it's planning for. It's not just about the springtime when all the flowers come up and everything looks beautiful. There's also lots of work to be done to make that happen, which which this time of year is is when that that investment in that 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 groundwork, no pun intended, is is when when we should be getting in there and um, and making sure the earth is 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 at its best and 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 as you say, the nutrients in the earth will help grow the the, the quality of vegetables and flowers whatever it is you your, your preference is for isn't it Absolutely. fantastic well that's that's been really interesting i, I mean i have learned a couple of things there today that i hadn't uh, hadn't previously considered i'm not a particularly green fingered person myself i have to say i my 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 go to mindfulness activities more often baking and cooking and and so I, once 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 it's all been dug out of the ground i'll i'll happily take all that veg in and make a nice big pot of soup with it or something but uh it's a great way yeah. to do it <laughs> absolutely absolutely there's nothing better than a a nice hot um winter warming vegetable soup right at this time of year i must admit especially with bonfire night not in the too to, too far distant future oh, nice cup of hop soup with the fireworks going off is uh can, can be a real good uh a real good thing to do with all that veg well listen freya that's been fantastic i don't know if is there anything else you want to share with the with our listeners um the, no i think we've just about covered everything um i think the especially those of us that are sensory seeking i think gardening in any way shape or form is great for everybody even if you just give it a go and you don't feel like you like it you know I turned out, um, I never thought I were green fingered either, but after a lot of error and a lot of trials, we're getting there now. Brilliant. Well, it's been fantastic having you on the podcast. We, uh, we hopefully get you back on again, as I said earlier in the springtime, and we can, we can talk about how well the, uh, the, the, the nutrients in your earth have uh, developed over the winter time and what you're planning to do for the, for the spring and summer. That'd be great that to have you back. Excellent. Absolutely. That sounds excellent. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Freya. For those that are regular listeners to the podcast, I hope you've enjoyed this this edition looking at gardening and the, the mental health benefits of, of, of getting out into the garden. We'll, uh, we'll be uploading more podcasts in the next month or two. We're trying to get one out every month. Um, I've got a couple of uh, uh, invitations out there with a couple of people to come and join join me on, on recording a new podcast. So uh, keep an eye out on the uh, on the website and on our social media for when those those new recordings are, are ready to listen to. And um, we look forward to hearing Freya again in the spring. So all the best, everybody. Take care. Take care.